Hi, my name is Kate, and welcome to DIY Wind Chimes for grades 6 through 12, brought to you by the Tewksbury Public Library. Here we have our materials. We have pony beads, a wooden dowel, wood beads, a large metal needle, twine, multicolored yarn, and mini gold bells. For our tools, we'll be using a pair of scissors. Here we're going to start with our twine roll. We're just going to kind of roll out roughly the size of our uh, length of our dowel. We're going to string the twine through the metal needle here. That's going to make it easier for us. And we're just going to uh, string the twine through the beads that we have here using our needle. And you can do this in any order or pattern that you choose. Uh, you can do more pony beads than wooden beads. You can do more wooden beads than pony beads. Or if you even have your own beads that can f that fit through the needle, you can use those as well. Whatever you'd like here. I'm personally just going to do uh, kind of a pattern of having a wooden bead, pony bead, wooden bead, pony bead, wooden bead, and then two pony beads. And you're, you're going to see that in just a second. I'm just going to kind of alternate the colors too because I, I kind of like it when it's more colorful. So uh, again, you can choose to have it all be the same color on a string or different colors like I'm doing. It's all up to you. I really like the sound that the wooden beads make when they clink together on the wind chime along with the bells. So that's one of the reasons why I chose wooden beads instead of just doing those pony beads here. And again, if you have your own beads you'd like to uh, put on the wind chime, feel free. Just make sure you can string the twine through them. <laughs> I made that mistake. I'm just going to end each of my uh, strings of uh, beads with, uh, with two blue beads. That's going to kind of be like my own personal marker too, so I remember that's where it's going to end. Again, you can see this is roughly the length of the dowel that we're using. Uh, maybe a little bit shorter, but uh, it gives gives it kind of a nice length. I'm just going to pull off some of the uh, twine here and I'm going to cut it. We've got a, kind of a good amount of excess just in case for later, and you're going to see later, the excess is going to come in handy because we can always cut it down, but we can't really add string, can we? I'm just going to remove the needle from that end. You can see we have our string. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, knot those ends so the beads don't slide right off. So I usually just do a loop right at the end of the beads. I pull string through it and then I use my two fingers and kind of pull down towards the beads. The first knot you make can be, uh, you know, have some space because uh, we'll just kind of slide the beads down when we make our second knot. And I do recommend knotting it twice uh, just because we want to make sure those beads don't slide off. And it also ensures that uh, the knot won't go inside the bead either.
You can see we're just going to uh, move these beads aside here. Clear the workspace, as they say. Going to slide those beads down. You can even test it by uh, by pushing it down to see if it goes, uh, if it tries to slide. And then I'm just going to double knot on this side. With that, I have our pony beads. Again, if you have a different pattern, uh, you're going to knot it whenever you'd like to knot it, whenever you at whatever length you want your string of beads to be. Just pulling that down. You can see those two, putting the string between my two forefingers does help pull that knot down so it's kind of flush with the beads. If it's not, don't worry if it's not perfect because uh, the twine kind of gives it this rustic quality. So if you're, if you're a little off or you have a little big give or the knot's kind of a distance from the bead, it's, it's going to be fine in the end, don't worry. You can see that's a, some secure beads right there. So we're just going to put that aside. You can, we're actually going to use it as reference for the uh, rest of our string of beads, just so that we can kind of follow the same pattern and roughly the same length, because uh, we want it to be uniform. I mean, you can have them different lengths, but I, I like it uniform. You can kind of see right there, there's the uh, lining up the strings roughly. And I'm still going to keep this string on the on the roll, just in case I want a little extra. I actually cut it. I'm looking like I'm going to cut it here, but <laughs> I'm not going to because I like to have that uh, um, extra give if I need it. And just because we are repeating a few of our steps here, I'm just going to speed up the video for the other four strings of beads. So I'm doing four, you can do more. Uh, I would not recommend putting too many. I want to make sure you can space them out. Uh, at least a few inches so they don't tangle too much, but uh, I'm only really doing four here, so I'm just going to kind of speed up all the bead stringing. You can see I'm kind of lining up the uh, the first one I did so I can kind of match it, because I want mine to be matching. Uh, yours don't have to be, but uh, just what I wanted to do for this here. And with each string, don't forget to knot your ends. Very important, I forgot one of them and they all came off. So <laughs> just make sure to knot both ends when you complete each string of beads. You'll actually see here I'm only showing three strings. Uh, looks the fourth string that I made didn't record, so uh, I made four. <laughs> they all look roughly about the same. <laughs> so uh, just to let you know, because it's not on the video, it's because my uh, video didn't record it. So <laughs> there are four, supposed to be four. And then our next step here after we string our beads is we're going to take our dowel, our wooden dowel, and our multicolored yarn. Uh, you can wind it with the twine instead. Uh, I kind of wanted to add a little bit more color, so I used multicolored yarn. We're just going to start off by making a knot on the end. It doesn't have to be flush to the uh, end of the dowel, just so it doesn't slide off. And I would double knot this. Oh, see, look, mine slide right, slid right off of it. So sometimes putting our finger at the end of it to cover the end sometimes helps. There we go. And that little piece can stick off. We're just going to trim that later. We can shimmy it down. And then we're just going to kind of wind our yarn around it. And you can do this kind of haphazardly just by winding it around. I kind of liked to show the fading of the multicolored yarn. By, by twisting the dowel while holding the string with my other finger. You can see right there the string is underneath. You can kind of shimmy it up if you need to. And then I'm just rotating the dowel so it can wind around it. And again, you don't have to do this. You can just wind it around and it still looks really good either way. But I just kind of wanted to show the nice gradation that we have for this yarn here. 
And if you're using twine, you can do it the same way, uh, or you can do it, you know, in crisscrosses or just free form, however way you want to do it. As we get closer to the end, we can flip our dowel over, which I'll be doing in a moment. Here we go. Just makes it a little easier to uh, get to the end of it. And we're going to leave a little bit of gift right here because we're going to make our knot. And I recommend putting, capping the, uh, uh, well, after cutting our string, <laughs> just putting your finger on the top to make sure it doesn't slide off. I'm personally just going to knot it right now while I have it here, and you can kind of go put the knot over it. It doesn't have to be at the end, just so that it doesn't slide off. I give it a real good tuck. So if you, if you do a little circle, a little loop, and then you around it. And you pull the string through and then just kind of tug it. Then we're just going to trim off the excess. You don't have to cut too close, but, uh, but just enough. And then we're going to trim this one off while we have it. Just be careful your fingers don't get in the way of your scissors. And here we go. Look at that. Looks kind of neat, doesn't it? I like it. And then we're going to uh, take our strings of beads. So this is why we have the extra string, and we're going to tie it to uh, our wrapped dowel here. So you can do either end. I'm just going to pick this end, then I put the two blue beads on. I'm just going to uh, lay the dowel on top of the string, put a loop around, and then pull that string through. So basically I'm making a knot while, going, while having the dowel inside the knot here. So you'll see, I'm going to double knot it. I'm going to show that again too, so. Sorry, my fingers are a little bit in the way. You can see that's that's just uh, one tie here, and then I have to tie, do it one more time. Just give it that secure knot, make sure it doesn't come off. There we go, and then just tr 
trim off the extra later or not. I did not exercise good scissors skills. Make sure the scissors are pointed away from you. <laughs> You'll see what I mean later in the video. All right, so there we go. We have our first string there. I'm just gonna kind of space them roughly evenly apart. Uh, so I'm gonna speed it up here just because we're repeating the same action. And if you do tie it and you find that it's not in the right spot, you can just like slowly shimmy it. Just make sure you uh, hold the uh, ends of your dowels uh, so that the yarn on the dowel doesn't slide off. And we're just gonna do the other ones here. Again, we're just doing two knots. Here we are. So we had those tied to our dowel. So I did four, roughly evenly spaced. If they're evenly spaced, this will ensure that they won't get too tangled when they're uh, in the wind. So you can see we have our excess string hanging off the bottom. We are going to use that, so do not trim it just yet. So we're gonna take our little bell and because our uh, needle does not go through the little bell, the hole at the top, we're just going to do it through manually with our fingers. It does go through. It uh, just might take a few tries. And then we're just going to pull it through, the twine through it. So it's right at the end of the bead. And we're going to make another knot. So we're going to bring that loop. We're going to make a little loop. Put, pull that string through. And then pull that string to make the knot. You can do just one knot here. I like to do two if I can. And there might be a little excess twine at the bottom. That's okay. It'll, it'll kind of straighten out once it's uh, hanging up. So we're just going to trim our twine here. Again, I did not hold my scissors properly, so make sure the scissors are not pointed towards your fingers. Try not to get tangled with the other strings, right? There's our knot, you can see it right there, and we're just gonna pull it very gently. You can sometimes pinch your fingers and pull down. That does help we'll make that knot if you can. Uh, it's pulling and not going. You can see right here, that's where I, uh, you can see my Band-Aid there? That's because I, um, I cut my finger with the scissors, so. <laughs> because I was not pointing them away from me like I should have been. So this is how we learn through painful mistakes. <laughs> so I'm just going to speed up here uh, with our bells. You can see I'm going to exercise great uh, scissors etiquette and always keep the scissors away from my hand. So just make sure you do the same. You can see right there we have a bell on each end. We trim the excess. So now and you can see the bells, uh, we'll, we can straighten them out just because the knot might bend them a little bit. There we go, you can see they straightened out. There we go, nice little bell sound. And then lastly we're going to tie the string that's going to hang up our wind chimes. So you can use the yarn or you can use the twine. I personally like the twine because it's a little sturdier. So I'm just going to kind of measure out like roughly you length of the dowel, and I'm actually going to do a little bit more because we're tying knots, so I want some excess here. I'm going to do lots of excess. Again, you can always have more string, but it's, you can't, if you cut it too short, you can't uh, add string onto it, you know? So we're just going to go around. I'm going to kind of line it up with the last uh, bead string twine that we put on there earlier. And you want to make sure that you don't tie this too close to the edge or it might slip off. So I'm just going to tie, tie it once and tight and then I'm going to double knot that so I'm going to tie it twice. And 
Yeah, there we go. There's my second nut. <laughs> just to make sure we don't want them falling. And then I'm just going to kind of move my knot to the top. And then you can see I, I trimmed with the scissors away from me, as I should have before. So there we go. You can tuck it to make sure it's sturdy. And then we're just going to tie the other side here. So again, I'm going to line that up. I'm going to pull, put the twine behind the dowel, make a loop, make a knot here. And then again, a uh, second knot is going to be made as well. And then we can trim that excess on there, and then give it a little test tug to make sure it's it's not going to untie itself. If it unties itself, just cut yourself a new string. No worries. So you can see that's how we're going to hang it. You can hang it from a uh, like a push pin on a bulletin board. You can hang it from a tree. You can hang it outside. Lots of things to do. So here it is hanging. Nice little bell sound you're going to hear. It's going to be so nice when you put it outside. The wood clanking together, the bells clanking together. It's going to be so fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I tune in to our other YouTube videos, TikTok videos, our Facebook posts, and Instagram posts. And we'll see you next time.